Hello boys and girls, welcome to the new show where I go through potential summer signings for Arsenal. This is episode 12. Now, as I keep saying with every episode, if you've been watching them from the beginning, you will see that a lot of my selections are defenders because that is an area that Arsenal need to strengthen. And today, I am going to be looking at another centre-back. Now, I'm sure you know who this guy is. It's Barcelona's Samuel Mtiti. Now, a few months ago, you would have probably sat there and said, absolutely no chance Arsenal would be signing him. He is one of Barcelona's main players, best players. Why on earth would they want to sell him? But in those last few months, there's been a lot of problems. Now, normally with these videos, I go through statistics and comparisons to other defenders, especially ones at Arsenal, to give you a kind of idea of what the player's capabilities are. With Mtiti, I don't need to tell you how good he is. He is a phenomenal defender, World Cup winner. If he joins Arsenal and he's injury free, he could be to us what Virgil van Dijk is to Liverpool. He is that good. But we need to look a little bit more in depth as to why we possibly can sign this guy. Now, I said a moment ago, if he's injury free, this is where there's a bit of a sticking point and this is where questions are gonna be asked. Now, the price tag, people are suggesting around about the 50 to 60 million pound mark. That, for the quality of defender he is, sounds absolutely ridiculous. It sounds like a no-brainer. You would absolutely bite their hands off. You're looking at his contract. He only signed another one in 2018 and it's until 2023. He is 25 years old, not even reached his prime, the pinnacle years yet. So why are Barcelona willing to sell someone of this caliber for so little in today's current market? In terms of games played last season, there is a key. 15 games all season, 14 in La Liga, only one Champions League game. Even when he returned from his injury, he could not get into the starting lineup. Now, I don't believe that's based on his quality. I believe that's based on the fact that they've had a massive fallout. Because as I will get into in a moment, Barcelona and Mtiti themselves have had a huge disagreement over his knee injury and how he should be treating it. Now, what I will say is the injury itself, all right, um, has been going on for around about two years. Um, his history of injuries started in 2014 and they were just simple muscle injuries, hamstring, stretch ligament, hamstring again, muscle injury, and then two years ago, or less than two years ago even, is when the knee problem started. Now he picked up his first knee injury um, in May 2018, and that kept him out for 14 days. He picked up another knee injury in September 2018, and that kept him out for 43 days. And then the more serious one was November 2018, and that kept him out for 83 days. Now, this is where the disagreements lie and everything else. Now, Mtiti himself, he decided that he wanted to go and do natural treatment, let it heal himself. Um, whereas Barcelona wanted him to go and have surgery. The injury itself is a cartilage injury. Um, and Barcelona's medical team actually released a statement um, based on everything here. And these are, their exact quotes and what was said. That Mtiti is young and this knee cartilage problem is not usual in players as young as him. There are parts of loose cartilage, something that forced Carlos Puyol to retire. Barcelona staff think that Mtiti has let time get away from him and if he had been operated on after the World Cup in Russia, he would have already been back playing and having no issues at all. Work in the gym, strengthening quads and other muscles nearby is insufficient and taking on the regeneration of cartilage is complicated. 
Now that come from Barcelona's medical team themselves. Now Mtiti, he has spoken about it. And like I said, he's doing it the natural way, which does take a bit longer. Um, and he says that he had to go away. He went to Qatar uh, with Barcelona medical team and everything else to do his recovery process. He said that he was in a bad place at that time. Um, and a lot was weighing on his mind and everything, and he just wanted to get out of the nightmare. Um, so he decided to work on strengthening his quadriceps and a whole chain of other muscles, which had a big imbalance. Um, and he said that he's had it for quite a time um, and he had to work three times harder to get back from this. Um, during the World Cup, he didn't necessarily do what he needed to do, or rather, he did things he should have avoided. So, as you can tell, there's a bit of a disagreement going on between Mtiti and Barcelona. Now, I can understand where Barcelona are coming from. They are his employees. Um, they pay him his salary. Um, he is a professional athlete. If they believe that he could get back on the pitch quicker by having surgery, then they're all within their rights to do that. Um, and Titi, it's his body. If he believes that the best way back is by doing it through his own method, then he has a right to do that. Now, the recovery rate um, for doing it Mtiti's way is actually really high. So there's not really a risk of him actually doing it. What it does mean is that if they waste three, four months of him being on the sidelines, he comes back, it goes again, then they have to do surgery. Why not do surgery immediately? And then it's all done and dusted. So um, it's an interesting one. Like I said, if he is fit and... Um, we could get ourselves an unbelievable defender. Honestly, for years to come, this guy would be the mainstay of our central defence. Um, is it a fact that there's a problem with this injury long term? Is it a fact that they've just fallen out of favour? The manager don't like him? And they're looking at bringing in other players when you think of Ajax's uh, Delit. Um, they're going to want to fund that. They're going to need money for that. So maybe get MTT out the door. Maybe bring, you know, him in that way. Um, Arsenal as well. There's talk today even that Arsenal are looking at stalling on Lauren Koscielny, giving him a contract extension because they want to replace him with Mtiti. Um, so there's so many dominoes that need to fall into place for this one to happen. Um, I would sit there and say that given the medical staff that Arsenal have, there's no way we would sign a player who looks like they're going to just collapse within the space of a few days. But we are also the club that signed a player with a broken back. You remember that one? So um, that doesn't fill me with much confidence, even though the whole backroom staff has now changed and everything. Um, I would go for it, to be quite honest with you. This is a top draw, world-class centre-back. And for the price that they're asking, and people are saying that you could even get it lower than that, given the fact of these injuries, given the fact of him falling out of favour, and he may push the move. Um, now, you wonder why he may push the move, who maybe have a little word with him. Well, for some of you that don't know, he's actually best friends with Alexandra Lacazette. They were teammates together at Lyon. Um, and Titi was the one who actually started that celebration that Lacazette's been using, the one where he does the little you know, when he's walking and stuff. That was actually MTT. And if you see their Instagram posts, they're always commenting on each other's stuff. And, you know, Lacquer's posting pictures of him in his Arsenal kit and MTT's putting heart eyes. And I know you can sit there and say we're reading too much into it, but listen, they're best friends. They are really, really good friends. And if anyone can have a little nudge and say, listen, come over to London, then it's Lacquer. And I think that MTT would fit in absolutely perfectly at Arsenal, to be quite honest with you. Um, there's French contingent already here. Um, you think of the players that he would have around him. He'd be welcome. The fans would love him. My only concern is that injury. That is it. That is the only thing that worries me about MTT. When you look at his record for France, like I said, he's a World Cup winner. 29 internationals for France. Like I said a bit earlier on at the start, he could be to Arsenal what Van Dijk is to Liverpool. It's that simple. Top draw, world-class defender. And if we can sort out this knee injury, 
if it has gone away because he has returned from his injury now um, and there doesn't seem to be any problems in the latter stages of the season for Barcelona. The simple fact was he wasn't getting any game time. He just wasn't in the manager's reckoning. So he played the odd little bits of game here and there when Barcelona had already won the league and everything else. And for that kind of player, the bench is nah, not the place for him. He's too good to be sat on a bench. Um, and we need a centre-back. Big time do we need a centre-back. So there we go. Um, I hope I have updated enough for all of you that don't know the situation, that don't know the ins and outs of the injury and everything else. I don't think Arsenal would be stupid enough to sign a player that's got an injury that's, you know, means his knees are falling apart. I'm sure there would be extensive tests and all sorts to see that he has fully recovered or whether he does need an operation. Um, so that'd be interesting. Could we get this guy? Could we sign Samuel Mtiti? That would be the big name, the big signing of the summer. If you added other players around him, um, some other youngsters and stuff, sent Mavropanos on loan, Rob Holding comes back, we could very much start to see our defensive unit taking shape. World-class quality defender. And I think that if we've got the opportunity of signing him for around about that £50 million pound mark, which is what people are kind of talking about. It makes sense. Go and get the job done. It's as simple as that. So as usual, let me know in the comment section whether you agree or disagree. Do you think Arsenal should sign Samuel Mtiti? Are you worried about his knee injuries? Um, or have I released some of them fears or just made it worse? Um, if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you smash a like on the video. And um, I will see you lot for episode 13, which will be coming up. And of course, it's the Europa League final next week. And I'm on my way to Baku. I fly out on Tuesday. So there's going to be a preview to that before I fly out. There's going to be day one, day two, which is the match day. Um, and then, of course, the player ratings. And those player ratings... I better be smiling and I better be happy. I'm also going to be doing as well, just in case. I have to say this. I'm not getting ahead of myself. If we win, there's going to be a parade at the Emirates on the Thursday night. Now, I arrive back from Baku at 5.30. The parade starts at 7. I'm going to get there for that as long as we win. If not, I'm going into hiding for quite a while. Nah, we'll see you lot soon. I'll see you lot for the next set of videos. So until then, I'm out of here.